I'm here to see the Lone Bellow. I uh, learned about them from my good friends who came to see them uh, a couple months ago. What makes me come out tonight? Well, um, I think that it's it's cool to like get to know up and coming bands like before they get too popular because then it's like, oh, I was there at the beginning. I don't know. Um, and I like discovering new places too, so I figure this would be a good opportunity. Oh, baby. My whole life. That's my responsibility. I thought we'd get Sharpies every night. No, I have Sharpies in my bag, but no, no. Alright, guys, four minutes. That floor is slippery, though. Yeah, be careful. Don't fall on people. Signature move. You gotta get a signature move that way, please. Yeah. slow oh and we can dance around what happened play the music soft and low and you can be all kinds of emotional drive a car to your town 20 hours down the south Track to trails and snow With this letter in hand All your candles burned out Oh my good man I watch you dance around in circles 
with your new man in the club and you can be all kinds of emotional How did you guys meet, the, the three of you? Um, you guys are based out of Brooklyn, but that's not really home, right? Yeah, I'm, I've been in Brooklyn for about eight years, but Brian and I have known each other for the past like 12 years, old friends. And uh, we met in Virginia, we lived together in Virginia. Um, and uh, Kaneen's older brother is one of my best friends, and I sang in his wedding, and Kaneen also sang in his wedding, we actually Sang together. Sang together. There it is. The first time we actually like sang together, um, Zach was trying to work out some songs, and we were gonna supposedly start a honky tonk band. I was really excited about that. Um, Define a honky tonk. I don't even know because it does. It didn't it turn into a honky tonk band. <laughs> so what we really did was like work out some songs, and a bunch of our friends showed up, and we all like we all sang. Um, um, you can be all kinds of emotions. Like one of the first songs we sang together, and all of us hit the note together. And we were like yeah, the the big bridge. bridge, and we um and we were like holy cow that's that's real cool, and we leaned into it and like realized it was something that we really needed to take seriously, and that's kind of where it started.
Thank you for singing. Live shows are always really interesting, you know, especially if you've been listening to the record over and over again. You can see how it's a little bit different and it, it evolves as the band tours. So I'm interested to see where it's got to now. And maybe they have some more songs that weren't on the album. That's what was really great to hear. They bring such a good energy um, to the crowd, and I think, yeah, <laughs> some of that too. But I just love their energy, and I feel like their music is so healing and powerful. The way our voices sounded together when we first started singing together is what made me want to be in this band. And you can, when you have three people singing together, you can sing something really sad, and it doesn't sound quite so depressing. Because even though the subject material can be really sad, it's still three people doing it together. There's, there isn't the lonely quality of it. Um, and I think that makes it accessible to people. It makes people want to sing along to songs that otherwise might depress them. Um, and it kind of gives you the feeling that like, it's okay what I'm going through because like, these people are going through it too.
that'll make you cry Your hands are warm But your heart's as cold as ice And I wanna love But you just wanna lie Oh, you got a burden That'll make you cry Sunday morning I'm all dressed up My velvet shoes on We walk along through the snow and mud As your mind starts to wonder about the way it works And though you've got a button that'll make you cry Your hands are warm, but your heart's as cold as ice And I wanna love you, but you about uh, the beginnings of you as a songwriter I mean obviously there's this there's this kind of big story behind that um, your wife got in an accident of course yeah. I had an accident I mean I don't know if you're comfortable talking about oh, that no, but you, no, can you kind no. of walk me through the you just a little bit about that story and, yeah. and how that brought you to songwriting so I grew up on a horse farm down in Georgia and uh, I was going to school down in South Florida and these storms came through and uh, like these hurricanes so me and all my buddies piled on a few cars and drove up to my parents' farm because we like were evacuated out of the you know the little town that we went to school in. So we all go up there and hanging out. Wake up the next morning, you know, we saddle up a couple of the horses and we're just riding around and um, and sometimes uh, like animals can feel weather. It'll make them not act completely normal. 
just like the pressure and stuff, it'll it'll kind of psych him out. And my wife, uh, we still don't know exactly what happened. Nobody like physically saw it, but somehow I, I think that a horse like took off and ran her under a tree limb, and uh, she fell off and she broke she broke C1, C3, C5, and C6, and they like Most shattered. Yeah, it's like your neck. And they shattered and went into her spinal cord and, and um, you know, we got to the hospital and they like diagnosed her quadriplegic and, and then we just lived in that reality. And actually, Kaneen's older brother was one of the people that like lived with me at the hospital. There's like these 15 people that lived with me in the hospital for a long time. And um, I would start, I was going through like the different phases of grief and uh, I was mostly like in the numb phase. I would kind of like teeter in and out of angry and numb and um so i was writing everything because you know sometimes like if you start writing and you just don't stop no matter what all of a sudden like something the the things that are way down in there like just you start writing you're like oh that's what I'm getting. so that was like the practice that i was doing trying to like dig out of this numbness and and um i would write in rhyme because it just helped me like keep going and uh, my buddies were like, man, you should make these songs and learn how to play the guitar and sing at the same time and just go and play open mics. So that's where songwriting became kind of a cathartic like, thing for my like, rhythm of life. And, uh, and my wife, uh, we basically said, if, you know, if, if something happens, and my wife Stacy, Stacy gets better by like a miracle. Let's all move to New York City together and just do life together. And she did, and that was like 10 years ago. And those 15 people all moved to this little neighborhood in Brooklyn. And this band is basically like an extension of that group of friends and their values. And a lot of the stories are out of this group of people in this little neighborhood in Brooklyn. And, and um, so it's neat because now the music that we do now, like still the fundamental core like ways that it can happen, like just like tangibly. Like I've got three little girls, you know, and like live in 500 square feet. So I have like, we have like you know, her sister and his wife and like all these friends that just, we just help each other, you know, raise the kids. And, and um, I don't know, I just feel like this music has always been an extension of community for me. So that's how it started with me. Is everybody doing all right? Well, this is a song about this is a song about heartbreak and terrible things. Yeah, it's called "You Don't Love Me Like You Used To." Here we go. Can't go on this way. 
It's been fun, like, becoming a band. Like, we were in New York, regular jobs. Like, we played these songs, we knew they were special, and when we finished the record, I don't know, two, two and a half years ago, we thought it was special. Um, so we took our time putting our team together, but it wasn't until January that the record came out, and then it wasn't until March, after South By, that we actually went on the road. So once we started, like, playing these things every night, like, the, the band itself has taken on a whole new entity and it's really fun to be a part of because it feels like something that's like growing in sound every day and um, it feels like really rewarding to be a part of it. So uh, I believe uh, <laughs> there's some good people in this city that believed in us a long time ago. I'd like to dedicate this song to the good people at the river. Y'all wanna sing it together? Wanna sing this together? Sing pop it out. Pop it out, up it out, up it out, up it out. Pop it out, up it out, up it out, up it out. Pop it out, up it out, up it out, up it out. Pop it out, pop it out. Pop it out. know when you're coming in yeah. even if I was lonely even if I was broke even if all the dogs and the pound let me know saying it's never over it never ends grab my heart in the fire let us descend to the darkest of prisons break their defense we were right over the cages rules will be our days are all numb but not spent Peace, it comes easy Like a mist on a ridge Breathing in, breathing out It's all in my mouth Here's my hope that I'll be Something we're bleeding out Breathing in, breathing out It's all in my mouth Here's my hope that I'll be Say Papada 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 Papada
words we can't trust like you're dead You're tired, you ruin your dust Or oh, you amount to nothing Like tanks from the road While we scream back at them From below on the street All in unison we sing Our time's been redeemed We are all of the beauty It has not been seen We are full of the color That's never been dreamed albums and their recordings but live is even <laughs> even more emotion as part of their show and yeah, the crowd can, gets into see, it as well you can see it you can see what they're singing and feel it You're my 
give me the background and teach me to know. So actually, another one of those friends that lived with me in the hospital, his name's Caleb Clardy, uh, we wrote that song together. Um, yeah, there's like we made a record in uh, Rockwood Music Hall, which is this great music hall in uh, New York City. And uh, it's like three days, three nights. Last night, we were recording a song called Bleeding Out. And uh, just, we had to lay it down like 12 times, sing it top of our lungs every time. Like, really exhausted. It started pouring down rain, so we ran outside, ran in the rain. So our band's like out on Allen Street, 1 a.m. Who went out first? I think our piano, our piano player, player Brian, Brian Murphy, Murphy, ran out first. And he just went and like laid down in the street. So gross. So nasty. <laughs> Surprised he didn't get eaten by rats side. the second he so laid down. And then like Jason and Kaneen ran out there and like slow dancing in the pouring rain. And it was just like this moment. We were out there just like losing ourselves. Meanwhile, Charlie Peacock and Richie Biggs, the engineer and the producer, uh, just reset all the mics, set them up where we were looking at each other and really close to each other. We came inside and they were just like, I know you don't have a second verse to the song yet, but we're recording the song right now. He wanted to, he wanted us to like record it while we were feeling that high of being out there. We'd love to just shake your hand and say thank you for listening to our songs. Thank you for listening to our one record. We're hoping to make another record soon. We're hoping to come back to Boston soon. Thank you for the night. It's unforgettable. Yeah.
number.